I'll also say this, you can have fun with a three-hand watch, guys, and I've got the proof of that right here. So this is actually a 2009 model year limited edition. This is the Richard Longa Pour Le Merit. Now this is a watch made in 200 pieces in rose gold with a white enamel dial, Grand Faux made in three pieces, the sub-register for seconds, the center dial, and the outer dial. So the Richard Longa Pour Le Merit was a 200-piece limited edition that was built around the enamel dial and a fusée movement. This is the caliber L0441. The key thing here is that you have the fusée and chain, the combination of the two, meaning this movement has 915 parts of which 636 are the fusée itself, the fu or I should say the fusée chain. The chain is 15 centimeters long, it can hold a two kilogram mass, and it's one quarter of a millimeter. You can actually see through the skeletonized three-quarter bridge the transition from the barrel to the fusée. The idea is to create a constant force mechanism, and the Pour Le Marit series, there have only been about half dozen of them since 1994, when one of the first four Longa watches was the Pour Le Marit Tourbillon. This is a watch that is exquisite. One of 200, yes, but with the freehand engraving of the movement, none of the 200 will be exactly alike. This is as good as a three-hand watch gets. And yeah, white enamel Grand Faux dial with a fusée movement. And, you know, as you know, and as I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned in the past, you know, I'm not the always the biggest fan of uh, Lange, but I did bring one on the show that I thought uh, was particularly interesting. So this is a older example of the Grand Lange one. And you know what drew me to this watch, number one, was that sort of honey gold colored dial with a matte finish and sort of the, the way that it contrasts with the, you know, the silver on the dial, and it's all housed in yellow gold. And I just think that this watch has a, and you have, you know, obviously you have all the other features of the of the Grand Longing one, but I just thought that this particular example of the watch has a, a warmth that you don't necessarily always see from the brand. And I'm a big fan of gold color dials, and I think that gold color dials uh, should be making a comeback, and I think that they actually are going to be making a comeback. But, you know, the way that it it, uh, the coloring mixes with the, the yellow gold case. I just think that this watch is, it, it's an absolute winner. And I almost feel like it's almost like a, like a mixture of like a throwback with a, a more current reference. I, re I can't really explain it. I just think that it's like a beautiful execution in the watch. And I wish that the brand, you know, did more pieces like this with, with mixing colors and, and, and the case metals. And I, I just think that they did a great job. I would agree with that. Very few long dials outside of the Hanwerks Kunst series have more character than this. Like you said, there's a warmth and a charm to it, and I think it's that there's there's a sort of faded sense of aged gold. It's not that this is a perfect gold. The case is yellow gold. The dial has a few red and brown tones in it, and that's it's that tonal it's contrast. Like a mustard, almost like a mustardy kind of color. A exactly. It does have almost a mustard kind of color to it, and it contrasts nicely with the silver flash of the subdials and the yellow gold of the case. This watch is all about tonal contrast, and you get that gradient quality. Plus, because this is the original 2003 to 2011 Grand Longa one, it has the 41.9 millimeter case rather than the later 40.9, so it's just a bit bigger. It has a bit more presence. It has a bit more character, and that's perfect when you're trying to splay out that spectacular dial as much as possible. Yeah, and, you know, again, you even highlighted it, you know, is that, that it, the, the yellow gold almost has like a like it's 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 not like a, a super shiny bright yellow. It almost has like an antique sort of look to it, which really comes down to the alloying of the metal. And you know, I do think that yellow gold is is going to be making a comeback. I think you're going to see. Um, again, I don't know for sure, but you know, Patek Philippe is definitely due for some yellow gold cases. Whether it comes in the 5270 or the 5205, you know, there's they've got holes in the collection now where they've come out with watches in white gold, yellow gold, and even platinum, and. I think you're going to start seeing yellow gold making a comeback, and uh, you know this particular tone is one of my favorites. I'll also say this: yellow gold never really died. Patek and Rolex never gave up on it, and when Patek and Rolex say yellow gold is still a thing, yellow gold is still a thing. I think the ultimate comeback is going to come as a result of independence. I would not be shocked to see MBNF do yellow gold watches. Audemars Piguet is already running with yellow gold. So Brian's, I think, spot on that yellow gold is coming back. And yellow gold is coming back for young people, too.